Hello everyone, my name is Pedro Oliveira, I'm a cardiologist with Virtual Veterinary Specialists and uh, in line with our recent uh, webinars on congestive heart failure in dogs and cats we thought it would be nice to prepare something on the approach to the dyspneic patients simply focusing on, the, uh, on distinguishing the several breathing patterns that we may encounter. As you know the dyspneic patient is a very fragile uh, patient and we don't want to do anything to make things worse so it's not unusual to uh, not be able to perform any diagnostic tests such as uh, chest ultrasound uh, let alone thoracic radiographs so ideally we should get as much information as we can from just watching the uh, dog or cat breathe from far away without causing any stress so whenever we're assessing the respiratory function uh, we need to consider the respiratory rate not all respiratory problems lead to an increase in respiratory rate and that's an important clue uh, we have to see how the patient is breathing is there a problem getting air inside the lungs or outside of the lungs um, are there any respiratory sounds that we can hear with the stethoscope or without the stethoscope and is there any cough and what type of cough is present if we have upper airway problems, usually obstruction, we will have an obstructive pattern with an increase in the inspiratory effort. Okay, so either coming from the uh, nose or from the uh, cervical trachea. If we have a problem with the intrathoracic trachea, um, again, uh, reduction in uh, lumen size. Um, we will have an obstructive pattern but now with an expiratory effort, increased expiratory effort. Both of them cause a sound that makes it easier to identify these two uh, problems. We can also have uh, lung parenchyma problems or mediastinal issues, for example accumulation of pleural effusion, that causes a restriction to the movements of the lung and this will cause an increase in inspiratory and expiratory effort. And finally, we can have uh, lower airway constriction or reduction in, in size, in lumen size, for example, asthma, that will cause an expiratory effort. Now we have trouble getting air out of the lungs. And because this can cause a pattern that may be confused with this one, it's also often described as a restrictive pattern when it's truly not a restrictive problem, it's an obstructive problem. So this is a typical example of an upper airway obstruction, in this case a laryngeal paralysis, the right breathe uh, and at the right age. Uh, and this is a sort of problem that is very easy to identify. It looks like something, someone is sewing a piece of wood. It's the sort of case that you already know uh, uh, when a dog is waiting in reception or, or the waiting room uh, uh, for a consult, you already know what's wrong with that patient. <coughs> Same thing with this patient, uh, uh, typical noise caused by uh, tracheal collapse. Um, again, both problems cause an audible noise that is easily to, uh, identifiable. And if you notice, the previous case did not have an increase in respiratory rate or just a very mild increase. And this dog is panting. So neither of these problems necessarily leads to tachypnea. And that's also an important clue. There we go, in this case, uh, cervical uh, tracheal collapse. And this is an example of a case with intrathoracic uh, tracheal collapse. Uh, in this case, it causes an expiratory uh, problem getting air out of the lungs and uh, in this case it's, it's like a cough where he's trying to uh, get uh, every time he tries to get air out of the lungs he just coughs okay so these are easy ones this is the fluoroscopy study for this case you see the collapse of the intratrachea intrathoracic trachea okay there's some narrowing there of the cervical one of course the whole trachea is diseased so you can have collapse of the whole structure. 
Now these are uh, more challenging cases. Cats that come in with this sort of breeding pattern uh, where there is thoracoabdominal discordance that means that the abdomen the muscles are being used to uh, help with the breathing effort and the abdomen contracts in discordance to the chest now we need to see when what is the stage of the respiratory cycle is it inspiration or expiration that there is a problem with because you can see this pattern both with mediastinal issues pleural effusion for example or a mass that is restricting the movement of the lungs is preventing the lungs from expanding or you can also see this pattern with uh, lower airway uh, collapse or obstruction or bronchoconstriction for example feline asthma and that's why those two patterns are often confused and the expiratory effort is sometimes described as a restrictive pattern when, when, when actually it isn't uh, so for example in this case we see a cat that is uh, respiratory rate is elevated and it's not normal to see the breathing effort in a cat so definitely there is a problem the cat is not very distressed it's still you can see they still uh, sniffing around and <coughs> now the trick is to see what which of the inspiratory or expiratory effort is quicker so where is the problem in this case you see the inspiration is quick it, it seems like this cat doesn't have a lot of problem getting air inside of uh, the lungs but expiration is takes longer okay so you see it expands the chest expands quickly and then there's more effort getting air out and x-rays show uh, that there's some bronchial uh, disease so consistent with feline asthma and this is another case again you can see that there's the same sort of effort contraction of the abdominal muscles to help with uh, the breathing efforts in this case it's a little bit different you can see that both the inspiration and expiration take longer or at least the ratio is more normal uh, normally inspiration takes is a little bit faster than expiration with a ratio of 1 to 1.3 and in this case you can see that there's some trouble getting air inside and out of the lungs so this is more consistent with a pleural effusion case for example where there's problems getting air inside and also out okay there we go we see a lot of pleural effusion in this case a, a cat with heart disease and again radiographically as well confirmation of pleural effusion and these can be quite challenging of course if you compare them you'll see that the, the difference that we've just discussed and the right approach to these patients may be you know one of them you think there's pleural effusion uh, uh, ultrasound if available I it's not very stressful so you can just pop a probe on the chest confirm that there's fluid and drain it or if you don't have ultrasound and you're very confident that there is pleural effusion you can just uh, try to drain blindly okay uh, you're very unlikely to cause issues as long as you do it properly and you know don't use a huge needle uh, and do it carefully but it's not uh, you know sometimes you can save a patient's life by doing that and you, you, they're not stable enough to do any tests so you really need to make a decision uh, whereas the other one needs oxygen needs to be quiet and needs some inhaled steroids and salbutamol to be uh, better it's also not wrong to try it in this case and then you see there's no effects uh, of course here on auscultation you would also have some clues harsh lung sounds here you can have wheezing sounds uh, to help you with your diagnosis or this so you see a cat with the same sort of breathing pattern that also coughs so that's very suggestive of feline asthma now going forward we have here a, a dog with a very shallow breathing so tachypnea with uh, very fast uh, uh, movements there doesn't seem to be a particular 
uh, effort in getting air inside or outside of the lungs is just breathing faster and that's suggestive of uh, a primary lung problem uh, which you could find with pulmonary edema for example cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic pneumonia uh, hemorrhage etc so it doesn't really distinguish which type of fluid you have in the lungs uh, but this would be the sort of, of um, breathing effort that you would find okay this was a case with pulmonary edema tiny bit of pleural effusion so you could also have this cat that is very prostrated it didn't have any sedation so it's a very very poorly cat again he has a very fast shallow breathing okay you can't really see that there's a, a problem getting air inside or outside it's just breathing fast which is similar to the pattern that we've seen before with pulmonary edema but in this case is a cat that fell out of the uh, I can't remember if fifth or seventh floor of a building um, and has developed a pneumothorax again this case you listen to the chest you don't hear any lung sounds and you have this sort of pattern you can suspect and the history of a trauma you can suspect this cat may have pneumothorax you stick a little needle and see if you can drain air uh, of course ideally you take chest x-rays but if you're not uh, if you can't then uh, something needs to happen uh, we don't want to lose this patient on the other case you would listen to the lungs and you can hear lung sounds and uh, bronchovesicular sounds sounds suggestive that there's fluid in the lungs okay Remember, this is not uh, uh, an exact science, and we can all make mistakes. We just need to be reasonable and do the best for our patients. These videos were uh, all recorded in a previous uh, uh, site of work of mine when I used to work in Italy. I'd like to thank all my uh, colleagues there uh, that helped me uh, and, and other colleagues uh, obtain these videos and uh, thank you i hope you enjoyed i thought i hope you find this useful get in touch with us if you need any help uh, and also if you have any questions about this webinar and hopefully uh, uh, we will have more webinars soon for you thank you